What's growing on, gardeners? Today is Sunday, January 12th, and this is going to be part three in my dream garden series. Earlier in the month, I posted part one of my dream garden series, which was the design of the dream garden, the layout, and the manufacturing by hand of the raised beds, and I'll make sure to link to that above. After I was finished with part one of the series, I came out with part two of the series. And part two was orienting and fitting together all of the raised beds. And I will make sure to link to part two of that series above as well. This is part three, and it is by far the most challenging part, in my opinion. This is the setting of the four by four by ten foot long wood posts. And it's quite challenging to do so. Now, you don't have to go this route if you don't want to. I'm doing it because it's going to be very functional for me. It is going to be a combination fence to keep the pests out and a trellis to grow my tomatoes and other things like cucumbers vertically. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can go with a much shorter fence that won't be as functional, or you can go a much cheaper route and use something like a T-post, and it won't be quite as tall. But I'm really going big here, and I want to show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So in front of me right here, I have a whole bunch of 4 by 4s that are made out of pressure-treated wood, and they are all 10 feet long. When you bury a 4x4, four four, anytime you set a post, you're supposed to set a post anywhere from one third to one half the depth of the post. And everybody pretty much agrees that you use a third, not a half. That's way too wasteful. So, for example, if you were burying a 12 foot tall post, you would have to bury that four feet in the ground. If you were using a nine foot tall post, you would have to bury that three feet in the ground as a minimum. These are 10 foot tall posts, so by the letter, I'm supposed to be burying these about 40 inches in the ground. Now, what I'm actually doing is I'm going to bury them three feet in the ground, 36 inches, so I'm going to be shaving off four inches. I'm not going to be having a whole lot of weight on them. It's only going to be a simple garden fence. It's not going to be like I'm, I'm putting up fence that's going to hold board that surrounds my house. So what I did was I marked a line three feet in depth, and that's what that line is right there. That line that I drew across is 36 inches, so I need to make sure that all of my holes are dug deep enough that that line comes exactly up to the surface. Um, and what I also did was, this is a little bit of a trick right here. I have some three and a half inch wood screws that are galvanized that are drilled into the sides of my post. And the reason why is I will be embedding my posts in concrete. And normal wood posts, they're smooth. They don't have anything for concrete to really grab onto, and concrete really needs something to grab onto to increase the strength. So what I'm doing is I'm putting just a few screws in there for the concrete to grab onto, and there'll be something for that concrete to grip and really hold and give my posts a lot more structural stability. Now when it comes to concrete, I'm going to be only encasing the top 12 inches of my posts in concrete. Some people, depending on their soil, choose not to use any concrete at all, and they just backfill very, very tightly in lifts. Uh, the best thing to do is to encase the entire post in concrete, but I'm not buying five bags of concrete to encase this post three feet deep. It's total overkill, and the reason why is this. If you put wood in the ground, it doesn't matter if it's pressure treated or not, it is eventually going to rot. There is water that is going to get to it, it is going to eventually rot that post. If you live in heavy clay soil that collects a lot of water or you live in uh, any kind of soil that doesn't drain greatly, you should encase your entire post in concrete. But I live on almost pure beach sand. We get 20 inches of rain from hurricanes and it doesn't even puddle. The percolation is absolutely insane. So. My posts, because I'm in the luxury of being in sand, are going to be as rot resistant as they come. So I'm only going to encase the top 12 inches for a little bit of additional structural stability. And also, so if 10 years from now they do start to rot, I'll be able to take something like a car floor jack and jack them out. If I put in too much concrete, they are never going to budge. So that's why I'm settling on 12 inches. It's going to give me stability. My soil is already rot resistant because it's pretty much pure sand. And because I'm only pouring that one foot cap, I'll eventually be able to pop it out if the day does come. So you need to think about your own specific situation and plan accordingly. 
So what I did right here is I took a string line and I ran it around my entire garden exactly four inches off the sides of my beds. And that is going to reflect the center line of my posts. And I was able to set the first two. Um, I'm digging this with a manual post hole digger and it's really easy until about uh, inches 18 to 24 and then I start hitting tree roots. So I have to go through six inches of misery and then once I get through I'm back into pure sand and it's easy digging once again. After I pulled my string line I put where all my posts are going to go. The small stake down there signifies the exact location of the post. There's another small one. There is another small one, and I determine where the posts are going to go by uh, detailing everything out on a plan, and I measured everything out exactly. So the posts are all going within one to two inches of where I plan them out to be. So it's very important that you take your plan very seriously and you lay everything out according to the letter of the law. And here is an example of one of the holes that I dug. Now, four by four posts are actually three and a half inch by three and a half inch. So I'm digging my holes eight inches in diameter because I want to put at least two inches around all sides of concrete up at the top. It'll actually be a little bit more because the hole becomes wider at the top. And if you look at the bottom, here you can see the bottom of that hole. And that is clearly pure sand. It looks really great. It's, it's pretty much just white beach sand. If I, if I could dig that all out, I could make my own beach with it. So you can see how good the native drainage is going to be. But nevertheless, although I'm only burying my posts 36 inches deep, I actually dug all my holes to 40 inches. And that is because the bottom four inches of all of my holes are going to be filled with four inches of quickcrete all-purpose gravel. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want the bases of my posts to be contacting pure ground. I want them to sit up above the ground because even though my soil has fantastic drainage, the ground will stay damp to some degree. And I don't want uh, that bottom piece constantly wet. And that little bit of a gravel buffer will keep my posts off the damp ground and it will prevent rot. It will also give it a really firm base to sit on. And in that hole down there you can see the four inches of gravel. They're like little bluish gray stones. Setting wood posts is difficult backbreaking work. So it's very important for you to use any tool that you can to make your life easier or it will be absolute misery. And this is an example of such a tool. This is a post leveler. This is literally $5 on Amazon. And I'm going to add it to my Amazon storefront, which you can uh, link to in the description of the video. If you're ever going to set a post, I cannot recommend this more highly. All you have to do is strap this on and it will level it from both ends. Here you can see a bubble on each side. And right now, this post is in fact perfectly level. And this will save you all kinds of time from messing around with a two foot or a four foot level and trying to get everything just perfect. You can eyeball it really quickly. After that, all you do is superfluously um, mount, uh, uh, put a screw into a support board. And then I have just a little contractor stake, uh, which Lowe's sells uh, 12 packs of for like $3. And that's holding it in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to backfill 24 inches using the native sand, less the tree roots that came out of here. And that is going to provide my post stability until I'm able to pour the concrete cap. And it's getting kind of dark right now. The day is coming to an end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these three posts in. And once I have five posts, I'll have enough to start breaking open bags of concrete.
here is the final product after all of the 4x4 wood posts have been set, the concrete has been poured, finished, and all of the forms have been removed. You'll also notice that the beds are full of garden soil. I purchased 9 cubic yards of turkey compost fortified garden soil from a local supplier and all of that garden soil has been placed in my beds and it's the end of February so that soil is going to sit in those beds until the end of March beginning of April when I can actually plant my warm weather crops so that will give that soil a little bit of time to break down if the compost inside of it is not fully broken down yet and here you can see how everything came out You'll notice that the beds are a little bit warped, and that's pretty standard out of number two pressure treated wood. But now that the soil has been placed inside the beds, they'll slowly bow out again and hopefully regain their shape, especially when the weather heats up. That'll warm up the wood and they'll expand. You can see how straight the posts are. If I move into them, they all mostly disappear in a straight line, so that is very good. Everything came out pretty accurately and I'm really happy with how my plan worked out. Here you can see the same thing from the other direction. You can see that everything came out pretty straight. It's not 100% perfect, but I'm overall very happy with it. You can also see how all of the concrete forms came out. The foundations look great, and because they're elevated, water will not intrude in between the concrete and the posts, so that should help extend the life of these wood posts. Then over here you can see the right side of the garden. I have three four by six beds. I intend to put asparagus in at least one of them. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the other two yet, but that gives me a little bit of additional garden space with smaller beds. You can also see how good and straight these posts came out as well. So now that this is all complete, the last part of my garden expansion project will be to construct a fence, a gate, and a trellis and those will be the primary methods that I'll be supporting many of my annuals like tomatoes and cucumbers. So stick around and I'll make sure to give you an update on that as well and that will probably conclude my garden expansion project and I will officially be ready to kick off the spring. Everyone thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it please hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to the channel for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is linked in the video description below in my Amazon storefront. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.